First of all, I would like to thank the team from Retina Imaging Congress for asking me to be here and also for in organizing such a wonderful meeting. It's always great to be here. So I'll be speaking on multimodal imaging in Azure. And as we all know, so Azure was first defined by GAS in 1992 as a syndrome which has got acute loss of outer retinal function. It's usually associated with photopsia, does not have minimal significant fundus changes initially, though they do appear in the course of the disease, and is characterized by ERG and field abnormalities. Now, GAS hypothesized this to be probably a viral infection involved with the photoreceptors, whereas Dr. Jampol's group thought of it to be a autoimmune and inflammatory process. But regardless of the patho pathogenesis, what remains is the fact that it's a disease which has got an acute onset of visual field defects, and there's a whitening of vision, blurred vision, photopsia in patients, and the visual equity is not that commonly affected. 30 to 40 percent of patients end up having a visual equity of 20-20. There is RAPD in 21 percent of cases, and 20 percent or more of patients can have some vitreous cells. Now, essentially, it's a photoreceptor dysfunction which happens over here, and photoreceptor outer segment dysfunction is implicated in the reason for visual loss. So, I will be just discussing some of the advantages which multimodal imaging gives in diagnosing these cases because Azure can sometimes be confused with multifocal choroiditis and with other uveitic disorders, with mutes, white dot syndromes. And I am sure in the next few talks, my colleagues will be speaking on them. But how does multimodal imaging help us in diagnosing this rarely seen disease? So, I'll be talking in brief on fundus changes, changes which we see on autofluorescence, OCT, FA, and ICG. Now, initially, there may not be any significant appreciable changes, which are not there in nearly 50% of cases. But subsequently, down the line, you might develop something like these RP-like changes over here, mottling, and these correspond to the areas of visual loss. Now, if you look over this phot photograph carefully, you will be able to appreciate some changes over here around the papillary lesion, and autofluorescence very nicely illustrates these cases with this hyper-autofluorescence and this beaded ring or this beaded appearance in the margins of the lesion, which you see over here. In fact, this has been described very nicely in this paper by Dr. Yanuzi's group, where they describe peripapillary areas of RP atrophy, and they describe something called a demarcation line, which can be seen over here in these patients. Apart from this, you can also see a diffuse patchy autofluorescence, which is seen in this patient. And this is another one of our patients where you see this pigmentary changes in this patchy lesion and this autofluorescence over here in this eye. Abnormal hyperreflectance or near infrared reflectance is also seen in these patients over here, which was described in this paper. And wide field imaging again shows the presence of these characteristic changes of with this demarcation line and autofluorescent changes, which you see in these patients significantly. Now, this is another one of our patients where you see this hyper autofluorescence, and again, this demarcation line and this ring of hyper autofluorescence, which has got this characteristic distribution around the lesion, which is seen in these cases of Azure. ICG reveals the presence of this hypo-autofluorescent areas around the lesion and in the peripapillary areas. And FFA changes are seen in some around 9 to 10% of cases, predominantly due to changes in the RPE. And they may be hyperfluorescence, window defects. Vascular changes might be seen in some cases, but 50% of patients may not have significant changes on FFA. Now, Dr. Jampo's group described this characteristic triple trizonal pattern, which is seen on OCT, where you see this number one, which is the normal area of the retina. This is the number two area where you see this photoreceptor damage, and the third area, which is predominantly a choriocapillary atrophy, and you can correlate it with OCT, where you see this area, which is normal, and then when you move on to this second zone, this is the zone which has got a photoreceptor and RPE degeneration, and the last area, which has got a choriocapillary atrophy. Besides this, there are other multiple papers and reports which have shown changes in photoreceptor area and in the ISOS junction. And this was another paper where they predominantly showed changes in the ISOS junction. Dr. Spade's group also came up with this very nice paper where they described these changes. And what they showed was not only photoreceptor damage, but also these hyperreflective dots. Now, hyperreflective dots, as we have seen earlier in morning sessions, are basically an indicator of an inflammation. So they showed this hyperreflective bands over here, and also a few cystoid changes which were seen in these patients with Azure. So another report which basically showed loss of ellipsoid zone and changes at the level of the photoreceptor in patients. So this was another one of our patients where if you see over here, 
you see this area of photoreceptor damage and also some of this deposition of this material in sort of a drusenoid deposition of this area over here. There have been cases and images of adaptive optics which have shown a hyper reflectivity of the photoreceptor in the area which is involved. So in a nutshell, multimodal imaging helps in its diagnosing this rare entity where if you can see these changes in autofluorescence, you see these areas of hyper autofluorescence, presence of a demarcation line, which then these areas correspond to the areas of loss of photoreceptor over here and a normal photoreceptor layer in the outer area. And an OCT NGO will also reveal the presence of corio capillaries. So that's how multimodal imaging helps us in diagnosing these cases. And once again, I would like to thank all the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to present this talk. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Thank you.